want to welcome everyone who is joining us via live stream. Thank you for tuning in to our live stream broadcast. We are grateful that you would be willing to do so. We believe that the word of God will be, uh, it will be targeted as always towards your soul. And we ask you to follow the notes on the monitor. As you're looking at us on the screen, everything that I will share with you, every scripture verse uh, is on the screen. Those in the sanctuary, you will get your notes now. We're going to fill in the blanks as we go through uh, our presentation today. Thank you to all of you who are with us, uh, friends and family. Those those of you who are back with us who haven't been here in a while, thank you so much for being here. We are grateful to see every one of you. Before you take your seats, open your Bibles to Philippians chapter number three, if you will, and it is there that you will find our theme verse for this month. Philippians chapter three, verses 13 through 14. Here's the Here's what I want you to know, that uh, I read out of the Amplified rendering of the Bible. You don't let that bother you if you don't have the Amplified. It is on the monitors behind me, and you can follow along with me in your notes. More importantly, this week, you can study from whichever version of the Bible uh, you deem uh, to study from. Philippians 3, 14, 13 through 14, I do not consider, a brethren, that I have captured and made it my own yet, but one thing I do, it is my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward uh, to what lies ahead. I do what? I press on toward the goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. Everyone shout, yes, Lord. Say it again. I thought for this month, still pressing. Say it with me. Tell everyone in here what you're still doing. Still pressing. Today, our subtopic is just simply pressing to live responsibly. Everybody shout, oh boy. Oh, shout down your row and tell them, I've seen you living. If we could live a little more responsibly. Take your seats if you would in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, ushers, and all of you who have gathered here today to make today uh, look so beautiful in our uh, hints of pink. Everybody shout, yes, Lord. I want to open with a quote that I put into your notes. It is a quote that I saw um, this week as I was preparing for our time together, and I think it's a great place for us to begin our conversation. It reads this way. I do cannot give the author credit, but this is how it reads. It would be... A shame to work so hard to be fit for this world and be unfit for the king. Everybody shout, Lord, help us. Say it one more time. Now, I can look out at you. I see, I see all of you. I see the time that you have taken to look so good today. And one thing that I know for sure, and that is you didn't step out here today until you felt like you were looking good. Some woman look at your husband and say, he ain't lying. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I was ready to go, and my wife was still in there. I said, get right, baby, then. Get right. <laughs> get right. If, it, if, if that's what you got to do, get right. But she didn't spend her time, and I didn't take the time to tie this tie, you know, perfectly to, to not look my best. I wanted to look my best today for the world. What I loved about this quote is that it strikes all of us in a commonplace. None of us um, wake up to present our worst self to the world. We wake up to present our best self to the world. Are y'all listening to me? We, we, will, we, will, we will present our best, our worst self at the house, but get our best self together for the world. Y'all don't have to look at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Don't make me go. I said you will, you will walk around the house. You may wake up in the morning, get on the phone, check emails, haven't brushed your teeth or washed your face. But God forbid you leave the house looking that way, <laughs> smelling that way. Y'all listening to me? I said y'all listening to me. I look at some folk, I'll go out and I say, wow, boy, they must be going right back home after they get these groceries. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all see them in the line. <laughs> we go through, we, we, we go through a lot of steps to look our best for the world. The author of the quote said, it is incumbent upon us to take 
those steps and then some to be fit and look right for our king. Now, we all can testify we took some work to get ready to look at one another today, to see one another. What the author is asking us is how much time do you take to be prepared for an eternity that you will spend with your sovereign creator? Shout down your row and tell them that's a little deeper there. Yeah, and so then it is with this thought in mind that I call your attention to what, what I, I, I want you to think about the, today, and that is we spend so much energy trying to fit in with the world. God is asking us every day, how much energy are you spending to be fit for me? The Apostle Paul says to us as he wrote to Timothy, he says, Timothy, I don't want you to be unaware of this physical exercise, profit if little. He's not saying that it is not beneficial. He's just saying what he said over and over to us as though is that if you keep living, the truth of the matter is your outward man is perishing. It is not a knock on you. You do everything you can to look your best, to operate your best, but your outward man is perishing every day you wake up. But the beauty of walking with God is coming to a place of understanding that God has given you and I life so that we can live again. I said God has given us life so we can live. Say it with me. God has given us life so we can live. So we can live how? So I put in your notes another quote from, uh, that I just wrote down for you. And that is Jesus gave, I mean he died to give us life. And here's what I want you to think about this week. It, how important it is that you live. Tell me how. Say it again. Responsibly. Live how? Responsibly. Live responsibly. What does that mean, Pastor White? You want me to be responsible. I just don't want you to take for granted the grace and the mercy that has been given to you by a sovereign king. I just don't want you to get up every day and start living as if you're entitled to the breath you're breathing. I know many people believe that they are, but I just want to suggest to you, all of you under the sound of my voice, that you and I standing here today, sitting in this room today, we need to take the time to pause for the cause and say, you know what, I'm doing better than I deserve. That the truth of the matter is, as the old songwriter used to say, millions didn't make it. But I'm glad that I'm one. I'm just one that did. And now the question becomes, since I made it to this point, what am I supposed to be doing? And so it is with that thought in mind that we sort of think about what we've been talking about all week. The Apostle Paul picks up his pen and he writes this letter to us in the book of Philippians. He writes it to us from a Roman prison, everybody. This is not a man who is living with all of the freedoms that you and I have. This is not a man who is enjoying the best that life can offer. This is a man who has been beaten and bruised and at many times abandoned by the very people he preached for and lived for. He is in a very desperate place. He is in a hard place. And God has allowed him to go to this place so that he could shout to you and I that no matter how tough our situation is, no matter how desperate our circumstances may get, the truth of the matter is that is not an excuse to live irresponsibly. You have to live responsibly no matter where God allows you to go. Everybody shout, yes. yes. Do me a favor and slap your funny at the neighbor. Don't slap him in the face. Slap him in the arm and tell him you know that God has been good to you right where you are. Yeah, that's all the apostle was saying. The apostle writes to us from prison to say to us, I don't want you to wait till the battle is over. Y'all not listening to me. I don't want you to wait until you're diagnosed with cancer. I don't want you to wait until cancer is gone. You have a reason to shout right now. So let's put our hands together and open our mouths and let out a thunderous. Let's live responsibly. Everybody shout, let's live responsibly. Now, what I love about the apostle is that he writes this message to us in, out of the book of Philippians. And he says to us, as I share it with you in our theme verse, he says, I haven't made it there yet. 
I haven't made it to this goal. My goal is to live responsibly in a world that is morally bankrupt. I, rec I wake up every day. The apostle consider he wakes up every day chained to men and women who have committed serious crimes. Men and women who are destitute morally, bankrupt. And yet he is in there knowing that his only reason for being incarcerated is that he believed in a God who was bigger and greater and more important than anything he was going through. He shares with us in Philippians chapter 3 that I want you to be clear that everything that I gained and bragged about in this world, every degree I have, every amount of money that I have, I counted as dung, manure, loss for the knowledge of Christ Jesus. He says that I have come to know God in my prison like I never knew him in my freedom. And the question for each and every one of us, the challenge for us is in difficult times, can you get to know God in your difficulty? Because what I have come to know about God is that he is not just the God of sunshines. He is also the God of dark storms. And what I've come to find out about living this life is that all of us will go through some dark storms. I don't have to convince you of that. If you've been through a dark storm, go ahead and put your hands together and shout, yes, Lord. And so the great apostle, he says, all right, then. He says, so here's, here's what I want you to do, and I want you to see it. He says, I want you to live more responsibly. I want you to recognize that as you walk with God, that, that right where you are, not after you get out, and I want to say this over and over, right where you are, God is, uh, he's worth your best self. He's worth your best self right where you are. Hurting, he's worth your best self. Confused, God is worth your best self. Are y'all listening to me? emotionally out of it, relationally struggling, financially struggling, God is still worth your best self. And so the great apostle, he spends his energy to tell us from prison that, guys, I haven't attained this idea. I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm pressing towards it. I just want you to know that there is nothing that's coming at me that's going to keep me from living responsibly. I am not going to act like that because I'm incarcerated, I have a reason to start murmuring and complaining. Y'all listening to me. I'm not going to act like because God has allowed me to go through this hardship that somehow he's not worthy of my hallelujah, my thank you, Jesus, and my Lord, you're worthy. And you know, I get frustrated with the church of 2017 because we go through a little something and act like now that gives us the license to withhold our praise and our adoration from a God who was good long before we got here. And I want to submit to you that the goodness of God is not something that vacillates between the storms and the, the sunshine in your life. God is good all the time. And I wish I was in a church that would testify. I said, God is good all the... What I love about the great apostle Paul is that he writes to us from prison to let us know that whatever you're complaining about, you better look at the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before you because they bless God even in their storms. They kept pressing even when they were being pressed. They kept pressing even when they were being pressed. They lived responsibly even when life was caving in on them. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And so I want to give you three keys to living responsibly that I found out of this chapter here in the book of Philippians. And, uh, and, and then I'll take my seat. Everybody shout all right then. The first key to living responsibly is the Apostle Paul shouts at us and he says, I want you to see this. And that is the first thing that you must do. Where am I at? Yeah, is that you must always at all times recognize that you represent God. Everybody shout always, always. at all times. Always. Recognize that you represent. Who do you represent? So, so here's what I want you to understand. For those of you that don't know what I'm saying, I say we have to keep pressing. What are we, what are we doing still? Pressing. pressing towards what? Living. 
Responsibly. What does living responsibly look like, Pastor White? I'll tell you what it looks like. You represent God at all times. That's what the apostle says. He says, from prison, I still represent God. Y'all not listening to me. And many of you think that the only time you represent God is when you're dressed up. And the apostle says, I have on prison linen. And I'm appalled at how you guys are representing God on the outside. So he writes to the church, read the passage that I put in your notes in Philippians 2. And he says, the nerve of you to be murmuring and complaining as if you have something to be upset with God about. He says, I am appalled. I'm offended that you who are doing so well are representing God so badly. Do me a favor and shout down your row and touch your name and tell me, I don't know what I'm going through this week. I don't know what storms will arise. I do know this. I will, with all my heart, represent God as well as his grace will allow me to. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. And so then at all times we represent God. At all times we what? At all times we represent God. I can't live responsibly if I don't recognize that. This week on the job, God expects for someone to allow him to be their hands and feet, their mouth and their heart, and their mind in the earth. Are y'all listening to me? God expects for you and I when we leave here today to treat people that didn't come to church with us with a certain dignity that allows them to understand you don't represent yourself. You represent someone else. I love what Deacon Shippey shared on the prayer line on our AHA Bible study this week. He said that one of the things on last week that he, he saw as he was going through this week is that there was a moment of opposition. And there were people who were ready to go after because they had been offended. They were, had been offended. They had been wronged. And everyone in the group acknowledged that, yes, we have been wronged. They wanted to know, why don't we go for retribution then? Why don't we go after them to repay them evil for evil? And Deacon Shippey said it was then that he recognized the truth of last week's message, which was that when, when you and I are working in the earth, we have to press towards mastering the vertical and horizontal relationships. But the truth of the matter is, if you catch me in my horizontal relationships and I'm not right vertically, I'll get with you evil for evil. Y'all listening to me? But when God is the center of my joy... When God is my everything, I can operate down here and you can throw me evil and I can do what God would do and love you even when I'm despitefully used. And so then when we understand that, we get to understand that, man, part of my responsibility in the earth is to say every day that I represent God. When I handle my wife, when I deal with my wife, when I speak with my wife, I represent God. When I speak to my employees and when I speak to my clients, I represent God. When I deal with my members, with the members of our church, when I deal with those who come in week in and week out, y'all don't come in week in and week out to hear from me. I represent God. And so do you. And so do you. And so do you. So I put in your notes this quote from Abraham Lincoln that I want you to see uh, because I thought it was important to recognize that no matter what your title is, that there is a certain uh, level of responsibility that is placed on you. Uh, and so Abe Lincoln, he said this, sir, my concern is not whether God is on my side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side. For God, the president said, is always not sometimes he is always he's always right so so that helps me that frees me when i understand that because that means if i find myself in a wrong place even if i'm in a wrong place no need for me to get mad at god because he's always i wish somebody would shout with me he's always right pastor white it's always right He's always right. He's always right. But look at you, and you'll have friends that say, but you going through it. I'm so tired of you going through it. I'm so sad. I don't know about that. I'm tired too, but I know this. God is always right. He does all things well. And he's been better to me 
that I could have thought of being to myself. So I'm going to represent him here, even though I don't want to be here. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask somebody if you really want to be there. You can do where well, I know all of us are in different places. I know that you can answer that real quickly. Do you really want to be where you are right now? Most would say no. But then I'm going to ask you to live responsibly. You're there. I know you don't want to be there, but it's your responsibility to bless God anyway. So I'm going to ask you for some responsibility real fast. Will you represent him now and bless him right where you are? Difficulties, storms, hardships hurts and yeah you're good all right good second responsibility then is if we're going to live responsibly we must find rest in God we must do what find what find rest where tell me again Find rest in God. Now, now you say, Pastor White, I, I don't see all that. You, you better, where, where was the Apostle Paul writing this letter from? Y'all tell me again. Where was he at? In prison. He's in prison. In prison. And he's still witnessing from prison. How do you witness from prison? You find rest. <laughs> yeah, it is my responsibility that no matter how difficult my circumstance to find a place to rest. I've said over and over that the enemy wants you to live an anxious life. He wants you to be he wants you to be overly emotional. That's why I told you every week, that's why I tell you every week you come here, I'm not after your emotions today. I'm after your mind. Cuz if you can think better, you'll live better. Are y'all listening to me? But if all you get from our service today is emotional, is, is something emotional to run your week on, the enemy will throw you with a whole lot more emotional. He'll hit you with a whole lot more to be emotional about when you leave here today. Are y'all listening to me? So being emotional is not important to me. Being informed is very important. No matter where I find myself, no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to tell you my secret to living responsibly. No matter where the apostle was, let me tell you his secret to living responsibly. He found a resting place. He found a place to find rest. He found a place to say, you know what? I'm safe here, even if I'm in an unsafe place. And I want to suggest to you that that place is in God Almighty. I want to suggest to you that if you don't know him that well, that's okay. He knows you really well. And I want to tell you that he says to you what he says to all of us. Come unto me, all you he labor and are heavy laden, because I want to give you, I want to give you rest. It is not something that we have to wonder if it's available to us. He says, I'm telling you that if you would represent me in every situation, I will take you through some storms and through some valleys, and I'll give you some rest in the middle of it so that, so that you go through it differently than others went through it. So, so that you get to live, and even if you sow in tears, you're reaping joy. So that you get to go through it and you know that you know what? Even in the middle of it, I'm doing better than I deserve. Would you do me a favor and shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say it again. Yes, Lord. Say it one more time. Yes, Say it one more time. Yes, Where did the apostle send the letter to us from? How did he write to us from prison to encourage us? He found what? Rest. What did he do? What did he do? In verses 16 through 18 of chapter 2, it's in your notes. I'm not reading all of this, but I feel like I need to re read this to you. He says, holding out to it and offering to all men the word of life. So then the day of Christ, so that in the day of Christ, I may have something of which exultantly to rejoice and glory in that I did not run my race in vain or spend my labor to no purpose. Even if my lifeblood must be poured out as a libation on the sacrificial offering of your faith to God, still I am glad to do it and congratulate you all on, on your share in it. And you also in like manner be glad and congratulate me on my share in it. What in it? In what? In the fact that you and I got to represent God. Every place he took us to, we got to live our lives for someone who was bigger than us. We got to live our lives for something that was bigger than us. 
And my share in it and your share in it is worth us congratulating each other. Do me a favor, reach over and shake your neighbor's hand and tell him I congratulate you on making it through this week. <laughs> Can you imagine a letter of congratulation from prison? I congratulate you guys for holding on. It has given me strength in my prison. I congratulate you for making it through this week. Shake somebody else's hands and tell them, I know you've been going through. Tell them, I know you've been, I know you've been up against it. But tell them, I want to congratulate you. <laughs> I congratulate you for your praise. I congratulate you for your, for your representation, for your living responsibly. Because you could have given up. You could have murmured and complained. You could have thrown in the towel. But you're still here. And I congratulate you. Thanks for your share in it. Thanks for reminding me I'm not by myself in it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't even know what you went through this week, but congratulations. You say, why are you congratulating me, Pastor White? Because I know that the weapon that was formed, it was the enemy's best weapon. It was meant to kill you. It was meant to destroy you. But congratulations, you're still here. Congratulations, you're still holding on. Congratulations, you're still in church. Congratulations, you're still running the... Oh. I just want to congratulate you in it. Because I know far too many times people will cry with you in it. People will say, I want you out of it. They'll even pray with you in it. But very rarely do they go on and say, this is worth congratulating you in. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Apostle says, from prison, I congratulate all of you who are still holding on. And I, I, I want you to do something. Send some congratulations back. I hadn't given up either. I can't get to you now. I can't get to you now. I'm going through a little more than anybody else. That's okay. Send me some congratulations too. So he teaches us how to live responsibly. When you can congratulate somebody that's in a storm and they can receive it, you know why they can? Because they have found rest beyond the storm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What was sent my way, I need a couple men back here, because what was sent my way, I'm going to show you how devastating it was. Real fast, y'all scared? A couple brothers back here, thank you. Get behind me. Now, y'all don't let me fall. I have a bad knee and everything. Don't let me fall. What was sent my way was meant to destroy me. I was walking along and boom, it knocked me off. Now, the reason you can't do life by yourself is because when you get knocked like this, you need some people in your life who will cause you to land softly and remind you that there is rest even in this place. They'll help to bandage you up. They'll help to cover the wound until you're able to walk out of here leaning on the Lord. But I ain't going to trip on you. Without good people in your life, that thing would have locked me all the way down here. What I love about the Lord is that even if you get knocked all the way down, he sent folk around just like that. And you may not be able to walk out on your own, but the Lord will make sure. He'll make sure that if you rest in him, you're still moving. And I just want to shout congratulations to those of you who are still moving. Congratulations to those of you who are still pressing, even though you've been hit with the best the enemy had. I like to congratulate you and boast about our great God because I like to let the enemy know how stupid he is to think that he can take advantage of me when the Lord is on my side. Oh, tell me who can. Stand be. 
for us when we call on that great name. Y'all tell me his name. Shout it again. Precious Jesus, we have You don't miss anything out. Listen, you listen to me, those of you tuned today on live stream. You don't miss, if you don't catch anything else, you better make sure you're resting in God. The enemy's coming. I'm not scared of him. I don't want you scared of him. You find rest in the one who sleeps through storms. You find rest in the one who speaks to storms. You find rest in the one who rules over storms. You say, what you mean rest in him? This ain't about me. I was representing him when I was doing well. I represent him in the storm too. Do your thing, God. Handle your business, God. Be who you've always been, God. I just want to live responsibly. I'm just pressing to make sure I handle my responsibilities. You're a responsible God. I want to announce this to everyone in here. If you handle your end of the bargain, God is a responsible God. He'll take care of his end. He will take care of his end. For our God stands alone. He takes care of his own. St. Augustine said this, and I want you to hear it. He says, God, you have made us for yourself. And our hearts are restless. Still, they find their rest in you. Don't let the enemy cut you restless this week. St. Augustine said, make no mistake about it. Your creator created you for himself. And you will be anxious and restless till you find rest in your creator. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. My time is almost up. I saw Deacon Shippey turn around to check the clock to make sure it was still working. <laughs> and, so, and so let me, let me get you. And so, Sister Butler, here's how I know if I'm living responsibly. The apostle said, this is how I know if I'm living responsibly because I haven't gotten there yet. But he says, first thing is, who am I representing here? Because if I'm representing God, I ought to act like it. And the man in prison just said, I'm not going to act like a prisoner. I'm an ambassador of heaven, even in prison. So he says, I, I, I have to represent him to live responsibly. He says, number two, guys, I'm resting in God while they're trying to provoke me. I congratulate you because I've heard that you are still resting in God also. It is a tremendous power against the enemy. What do you do against an enemy who is riled up but he can't provoke you? How confounding must it be to an adversary who calls you names, but you are not in the name calling business? See, if you look at the, the discourse in America right now, it's becoming more and more uncivil because we're getting further and further away from our creator. But if we really represent our creator, even if you are uncivil, that doesn't give me license to be so. And so... This, this third key to living responsibly is for you to allow God alone to be your reward. 
The apostle says, I'm pressing towards it. I haven't got there yet, but I'm pressing towards the prize. He says, I'm pressing towards the prize. I'm straining every day trying to get to this reward. What's the reward, apostle? Is it a new car? Is it a new house? Is it riches and fame? He says, no, I just want to know him. My greatest reward in life has been to get to know a God who would take a broken down guy like myself and give him meaning for living. <laughs> My greatest reward in life has not been to be able to dress up in a suit, but to be able to look at a life that was misused and even represented me and now live it to represent the greatest king the world has ever known. I want to say to you that before the enemy gets you emotional about this week, about whatever you go through, can I say to you, you've already been rewarded. Your reward is in God. And when you recognize that, well, stuff don't get you like it gets others. When you recognize that you have already been rewarded, the life you're living, to be able to hand that down to your children, to be able to spread that in your home and through your community, is a reward far greater than riches and fame. To be spared from the devastation that would have taken others out so that God could keep you here. Why am I here, God? So you can still, you can keep pressing. So that you can live a little more responsibly. So that you can represent me this week. So that you can sit down and rest while others are losing their mind. And then while they see you rest, they say, why are you so calm? Why are you so peaceful? And you tell them, because I've already won. I have been saying since I have been since I have come to this understanding in God, the greatest revelation I ever received in him was the fact that I am not looking for victory anywhere in my life. I already have it. I want to announce to all of you in this room, I don't care where you are right now, you are already victorious. You say, but you don't know what I'm going through, but I do know who's going through it with you. God does not lose. He never has, and he never will. As the praise team gets ready, I'll end this way. You saw a picture of Sister Lassane Brandon. Her family is over here to my left. She led them all to this church before God took her to be with him. I said to them, when I did her eulogy, I'll say it to them again today. Sister Brandon did not lose. She is on the other side shouting to us. Congratulations for continuing to press. It's worth it. It's worth it. She has gotten to a place I'm living to try to get to. A place with that where, where that which is broken is made whole. Not because of the silver and gold that is there. Not because of the men and the women that are there. But because of the name that is above all names. Because Jesus of Nazareth is there. And when I see Jesus, amen. 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 We will say with one collective voice, it was worth it. You are our reward. You have done it again. You have lifted us again. You have rendered the enemy powerless again. You have given us victory again. <laughs>